What if I told you that some people claim that PMS is a Western construct? Well, that's what <laughs> clinical psychologist and author of The Madness of Women, Jane Usher, a professor of women's health psychology at Western Sydney University, says, and she joins us now all the way from Australia to elaborate. So, uh, Jane, just if you could walk us through your theory here, you actually say that menstrual madness is nothing but a myth. Can you explain well, we have PMS and PMDD, which is officially a psychiatric illness. Now, let's look at what the so-called symptoms of this illness are. They're usually irritability. They're usually anger. Some women feel very depressed. And what happens is if we have those feelings, we blame them on our bodies because in our culture, we're told they're a hormonal issue. We actually dismiss those feelings. We don't look at the real issues underneath them. And we feel bad about it. We feel guilty about it. Now, I've been doing research with women with PMS for over 35 years. And let me give you a typical example of a woman who comes to me as a clinical psychologist and says, I have PMS. I can get her to keep diaries for three months and find, yes, she do, does have this premenstrual change. And I say to her, give me a typical example of PMS. And what the woman would say, and this is a real case, she said to me, I've been working all day, I'd picked up this, the shopping on the way home, I picked up the dry cleaning, I'm making the dinner, I'm looking after the kids doing their homework, and I'm feeling really, really angry. I'm looking out of the window at my husband sitting in the garden, drinking beer and reading the paper. And that's her PMS. <laughs> now I think to myself, and I actually say to that woman, why are you not angry all of the month? But what's happening is she calls that PMS, he sees it as PMS, or you're just PMSing again, it gets dismissed, he carries on reading, she feels really bad about herself, and life goes on. So my view is we need to actually look at the things that women are unhappy about when they're PMSing, the things that women are distressed about. We need to take that distress really seriously, but we need to actually help women in ways that are not just looking at their bodies and blaming their bodies. What you say makes sense. It sounds like the real issue is sort of being swept under the carpet, that you know, everybody has mood swings and at times is under more stress, is more sensitive to that. And I don't think it's helping women just saying, oh, it's your PMS, it's your hormones acting up. It's that time of the month. I think, I think that's a disservice. Jane, I think a lot of the things that you're talking about makes a lot of sense because when we look at PMS in terms of what it is, it's not a diagnosis, right? It's sort of a syndrome. And yet when you look at the studies that have been done, there have been over a hundred different types of symptoms that have been reported to fall under PMS. And a lot of them are very nonspecific, right? And when we look at these underlying causes, the example you gave, I think is an important example of this woman has a stressful life and she's thinking maybe it has to do with her time of the month. And maybe that's not it. Maybe she needs to improve her relationship, improve her communication get somebody to share those burdens. And I don't think that we're arguing the biological changes of premenstrual syndrome. You know, the things like bloating or having more headaches. Sometimes people have more acne. I don't think anyone's arguing that. But we're talking about some of those emotional and psychological signs that a lot of people then use as a negative expectancy, meaning that around that time of the month, they start to get very hypersensitive about how they're going to operate. And whenever something feels a little askew, they attribute it to that time of the month. And then the next cycle, when it comes, it happens again. And I think that that's part of the problem.